changed it back. All just talk amongst yourselves for a second. We're just firing this up. Clips come off. <laughs> there you go. It's okay. Or it could be going through there. Like <laughs> crazy. If you go ask a professional. Okay. Well, we had to fight PowerPoint, and despite our prestidigitation. I think PowerPoint's won. PowerPoint has won. <laughs> is this is this mic on? <laughs> Anyone home? Sorry, Jason, we're making you this, this like it's sort of the early morning workout program. Okay. Oh, I it, I feel powerful. Okay. Where do I put this? Thank you for all your patience. Excellent. Right. Okay, so despite our prestidigitation, PowerPoint has won on a few of these slides. So at that point, you need to close your eyes and imagine beautiful graphics and fonts. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I suppose I just start clicking. Uh, so let's begin. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> there you go, okay. Um, let's see. Um, at the University of Hong Kong in 2009, we got a new uh, initiative from the funder of, of all of the universities in Hong Kong, and this is Knowledge Exchange. And for this, part of it was that uh, they want to make the research and the researchers at Hong Kong U uh, visible and to provide discovery upon all of, all of those details uh, with the expectation that after they're visible and that after people have made discovery upon them, that uh, indicators for knowledge exchange would increase. And these indicators are, are, are for collaborative research, contract research, etc. Uh, well, so in 2009, we received funding. We received several tranches of funding from the Office of Knowledge Exchange so that we could enhance our institutional repository. They chose the institutional repository because the idea of open access was very similar, complementary to the idea of knowledge exchange. And because we had, we were providing visibility and discovery upon publications, they said, well, why not extend and also show uh, visibility discovery on these other aspects of research at Hong Kong U. So that's what we did. Uh, and everyone was saying that, well, publication data, yes, that's great, but it's only one facet, only one part of the research uh, picture at any institution. So we began, and um, 
let's, oh, oh, I need to tell you that our development partner in all of this was uh, Chilea of Italy, and they are here in the audience today, and they can answer technical questions if you wanted to ask them technical questions. Um, well, so uh, we decided to augment the institutional repository, and the first thing was that the metadata on publications was extremely thin and extremely dirty. So how can we clean this data? How can we get full metadata? That was a, a big problem. And after that, we, we wanted to add other objects to the repository. Uh, ob objects on, author, or on people, or author profiles, which became researcher pages. Uh, objects for grants or projects, patents, etc. Uh, this is the, the first page of our um, institutional repository, or uh, it's now it's, it's much more than a, the, the traditional sense of an institutional repository. But anyway, this is what it, this is it, and we call it the Hong Kong U Scholars Hub. Uh, the abbreviation, everyone is confused, so let me tell you, Hong HKU is the formal abbreviation of the University of Hong Kong. There you go. And look up here on the top, uh, you can see that our menu bar is divided into one, two, three, four, five. Five uh, different types of objects. Uh, researcher pages or author profiles, publications, theses, grants, and patents. Theses is up here because they are very, very popular. They, are, they account for, for a high percentage of our downloads and hits. So let's talk about publications, um, the publication data. Well, for, we began with the publication data that comes to us uh, in the hub from the Central University Database, which is called the Research Output System, or ROS. And the data there is self-input by the author or his executive assistant. And it's extremely dirty and thin. The problem is, can't we get better metadata? So we worked with the, the registry of the university and the uh, information technology services. We showed them that they could use the API of Crossref, uh, just put in a DT DOI a number, and it, you could auto-populate the record in our ROS. And the same can be done with an API on WorldCat, OCLC's WorldCat. So they did that. And although they also added another input method using an RIS files made from EndNote. So the result was that we are now getting cleaner metadata coming to us in the hub. <coughs> another project to uh, clean the metadata was uh, uh, also funded by the Office of Knowledge Exchange and the, the university's research committee. Um, it, this was working with the data in Scopus. Scopus, by and large, <coughs> after disambiguation, it has very good metadata. Uh, and so for the last two years, um, my staff have looked at the approximately 1,500 um, names of authors at Hong Kong U, which have data in Scopus, and they have disambiguated. They have told Elsevier, for, for these two author ID records, you must merge them together. Or for, for this one, you need, you need to split it apart. And that has been going on for, for, for two years. So the data on Hong Kong U in Scopus now, by and large, is pretty good. It's, it's pretty clean. So uh, we have used the Scopus a API and also built through robots uh, to collect and harvest data from Scopus. We bring it back uh, to the hub. And the result is that we have cleaner and fuller metadata in the hub. And of course, at that time, we also bring back the full text object if it's available and, and put it into embargo if, it's, if it needs to be. Um, this is a screen, screenshot from Scopus, uh, the, the author profile record in Scopus for one of our authors. You can see he has 335 uh, documents in Scopus, it's a very simple matter to, um, to use the API or to build a robot and scrape the screen, bring back this data into, the hub, into our hub. Um, after it, it comes to us in the hub, we have a, a new utility that we have uh, 
that we use it for uh, making matches, matches on numbers, and if we can't match on a number, then it matches on title. Uh, we, can, we can overlay the, at that point, we can overlay the record entirely, or we can go through uh, element by element and choose, well, this, this record has a better author field, but, but that record has a better um, subject field. So then we can merge element by, by element. Um, this is a record, uh, a publication uh, record in the hub here. And uh, look in the, the, the top right pink box, there is a file there that you can click on to download, but there is also the links for the Scopus. You can click through, uh, see the record in Scopus. Uh, it gives the, the DOI you can click through to see the record um, in the publisher's website. Um, down here in the yellow box, it's showing that um, this particular publication has 16 citations in Scopus, 19 in, in Web of Science. And we're also going to add altmetrics there, uh, Stitcher-like, etc. cetera. Um, this uh, over here is showing the impact factor that we, that we uh, get from uh, JC, uh, Thomson Reuters JCR once a year and we add it to all of our ISSN numbers so that on any publication with an ISSN and also an impact factor, of course, it can show the impact factor here. And, and also the Cymago um, from Scopus. Let's talk about people. Uh, for people uh, at Hong Kong U, there are several different sources, several di separate silos. Um, the registry, the, the, the tech transfer office, the, uh, what, the communications and public affairs office, each of these people are keeping uh, data on, on our people. And for the most part, it was not public. And for the most part, it was not linked to other parts, right? So when we came along, we said we want to provide visibility. And they said, well, OK. <laughs> and it was, it, was it was pretty much OK. So we have set up uh, routines to extract this data from, the, from these different silos. And of course, uh, many of them are unique and have different ways of extraction. So it's, it's not a simple matter to, to set it up. But after it is set up, it runs regularly. Uh, this is a page that we built for uh, Professor Yim. Um, and uh, the, the, we, we call this a researcher page. It's, well, it's, a, it's an author profile. On, on the left side, you can see all of the facets for that, that belong to her, publications, achievements, grants, bio, uh, bibliometrics, right? So you could click through on any of those to see um, a research facet on Professor Yim. And of course, contact details, research interests, URLs, and um, also cited as. This is what where we put our variant names. So we do have an uh, authority control, a limited authority control in the hub, and we, we show it here with also cited as. Um, this is an example of a person in architecture. Uh, because we're doing this for, uh, for be well, because Hong Kong is a comprehensive university covering all subjects, um, and one of them is architecture. architecture they don't look at publications. They don't use publications as a, a measure of esteem or, or impact. Uh, but they do use prizes. So here it is showing that, that um, uh, Mr. Solomon, uh, the head of uh, architecture, he, he won these prizes. And when he saw this page, he, before this, he, he was very negative about our project. He said, Publicate, you're only showing publications. They're not worthwhile for architects. But he saw this and he was happy. We made him happy. This is a page for uh, Professor Che uh, in education. This particular part here is showing the su her supervision of research postgraduate students. All of the students that she is now supervising or has in the past. And one thing that we're able to do is we can show the, the title of the thesis for those students. And the thesis also is in the hub, so we can provide a link. You can click here and go to see that thesis. 
So this has become very valuable within the university because it, before it was very difficult to know which professor was available for supervising a student in which subject. Uh, let's look at bibliometrics here. We have uh, two, two kinds here. One, the first one is um, external metrics coming from outside sources, uh, and then internal, which we get from our, our own log files. So this is, a, this is a page showing external metrics for Dr. Ching. He's in mathematics. And we show a document count, citation count from Scopus, researcher ID, MathSciNet, PubMed, and the Mathematics Genealogy Project. So we set up robots to, sc to scrape screen in most cases. Some, some of these sources have API. But uh, we bring back the data here. It's hyperlinked. So now you can click through from here to go to those outside sources. Um, and because we now have this data consistently for all of our people, we can begin to make other types of reports. We can show um, top rated, um, top cited articles in a certain department or uh, the fastest, uh, the rate how would you say that? The, 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 rate, the articles which have the fastest rate of receiving citation, uh, which is a measure to show um, um, which, which, uh, to which topics are going to be uh, hi highly cited in the future. So here are some of our external sources. Um, Scopus, Biomed Experts, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, okay, this is a page for the internal metrics. A um, bit hard for you to see back up there, but anyway, <coughs> at the top top uh, left corner, the, it's divided. You, you could click th into uh, three different uh, views. One, the first one, which we're seeing now, is the researcher page. So all of these statistics here are cumu cumulated to one author or to one scholar. But you, you could click on the view count, the item, or rather the, the item view count to see um, counts on, on the items that he has authored. Or you could click on the, the download count to see individual download counts on items that he has authored. Uh, and you can sh see it by geography, you can see it by pie chart, and of course it's, it's over time also. And so we can do this for any kind of object in the hub. We can do it for people. We can do it for individual publication items. We can do it for grants. We can do it for patents and for theses. Uh, I we're still going to add a new object for, um, for organizations, which would be groups, departments, faculties. And of course, all of this will carry over to this, that new object also. Thesis and dissertations. Uh, at, at Hong Kong U, there were three separate silos, which made it very difficult to, to get consistent data. Each silo had a different view, was collecting some, but not all. So we had to, to harvest from three th these three separate silos, merge. And now, we, uh, now that we do this, we can write the data back to each of those three so that each of those three have a full record of thesis information at Hong Kong U. Um, we, after we did this, we found that we were able to show the advisors for each thesis. Well, the advisors. So you could click through here uh, and then go see the researcher page or the author profile of those advisors. Another thing that we do is uh, we register a DOI number for each of our thesis so that um, this will make them more visible, and in the future, we will be able to bring back statistics for each uh, individual thesis. Grants or projects. We, some universities have database, a database on research projects. As, as far as I can tell, Hong Kong U does not have that. But we do have a database showing uh, successful grant applications uh, with abstracts describing the grant keywords and the money amount. So it amounts to, to the same thing as projects. Um, so on, on a grant record, we can, of course, show uh, PI and COI. Um, 
And then over here we can give description of the grant, uh, who may apply, who is eligible, uh, what it's for, et cetera. And then down here we can show the publications that are linked to that grant, the publications that resulted from the research that was done with that grant money. In this case, this grant was for 25,000 Hong Kong dollar. Patents, um, we get very thin uh, metadata from the Office of Tech Transfer at the University of Hong Kong. And it's only from the USPTO. Well, USPTO is, is good and all, but it's only one patent off, it's only one jurisdiction in the world for, uh, for patents. So with this, uh, with the, the, the published patent number or, or with the granted patent number, we can now go to, to other um, uh, patent offices around the world, match and retrieve uh, patent data. So this is an example of a, a patent record. Uh, yeah, on, the, on the left with the red arrow, it's showing you the, 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 patent, the patent history. So a patent will start out with, as an application which is not public, no one knows it and, uh, in the beginning, but then I if it's lucky, it will be published. So then it has a separate publication number and, and a date. After publication, maybe 18 months, again, if it's lucky, it will be granted. And again, there's a separate uh, uh, number and a, and a date for that. So it, it, it can be very confusing working with these patents. I took advice from a US patent attorney uh, to get it all straight. Uh, down below there, it says uh, patent family. So if a, a patent was granted in, uh, in the US, it could have, the, the, well, the inventors would probably also apply for a patent in, in other jurisdictions, certainly in the big three, US, Japan, and Europe. Uh, and so you can search for those, and they also give additional information. They also, they all have, they, we could, we could get the, the, the published patent full text or the granted patent full text uh, and, and the abstract, which are, are very uh, valuable. And then, of course, down here, uh, patents have something called cites. Cite, uh, a patent can cite other patents, and it can be cited by other patents. So you can track it in time. And uh, so we can periodically go back to USPTO and other uh, patent jurisdictions to, to grab that data, harvest that data, bring it back here. And then, if we wanted, we could also hyperlink, add hyperlinks to it. Oof. OK. Um, visualizations, this is something that we're working on. It's not quite there yet, but it will be released in the next two or three weeks, three or four weeks. Um, with all of this data now that, that we have in one place, we can build charts and graphs and things. Um, and uh, it would be much harder if, if we were working in a distributed environment. I mean, well, we are, and we are. I mean, we are not working. We are. The data is now all in one place. It has already been harvested from other silos. It's already here. If we 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 couldn't make this kind of chart if we had to do it on the fly and grab data and match it to this silo or that silo. Um, so it has become very useful in that way. So here we're showing um, a, a chart of co-authors for Professor Bacon shown. And uh, he's at the center of, of the graph here. Uh, on the, the bottom left, it shows you a, a, a box there sh uh, with, with different research facets so that we could show co-authors or co-investigators or co-winners of prizes or people who have done the same co community service or people who have the same keyword in their publication. And we can, and we can show a degree of separation so that uh, you, could you could only show the co-authors of this one author, or you could show uh, you could show three degrees of separation: co-authors of co-authors of the author. And you could set that you could set all of those research facets and degree of separation in this bottom left box. Um, so then you could click on one of these names in in the graph, and it would then put him 
into the Cognate Researcher box and show you the different facet, research facets which these two people share. And here it's, sh it's showing that they share, uh, they share uh, keywords, two, two keywords in grant applications, uh, or they share one award. And then uh, you could click on that box. Another, um, another Ajax, Ajax box pops up, and from that you could click to see the individual grant, award, or publication. This is my. This is where PowerPoint has won. <laughs> we, we fought PowerPoint, but anyway. So the question is, uh, has visibility increased? And uh, well, there's lots of anecdotal evidence. We we are in constant contact with our with our people, <coughs> with with batch email, um, etc. And they are they write back to us. Uh, this this first one looks like I wrote it, but uh, but uh, I didn't. And he says that he's, he did an amazing job. And he says that uh, he's now happy that the, his research is in the hands of his trained professionals. So he doesn't have to worry about updating and can spend more time on his research. Uh, the, the second one was, says that based on the information in his researcher, researcher page, he was chosen as an editor for a new book, Two More Suppressor Genes, right? So vis visibility has in increased, and there are some happy people. Uh, people are, are, are winning contracts with this. P their, their reputation is, is growing, broadening. Um, it's working. And there, there are other measures that, that we can do also. Uh, from 2009 to, to 2012, the number of visits has increased 600%, of course. So. But the site has also become stickier in the sense of search engine optimization. Uh, when people come into the hub, they now view more pages per visit. They don't just come in, click on one to, to see something, and then bounce out. They're staying longer. They're seeing, they're seeing more things. There's more things there for them to see because there's all these hyperlinks between grants, publications, patents. They can click through <coughs> to find more information. Um, the bounce rate uh, has, has decreased. Um, people are staying, again, they're staying longer and clicking on more things. And the number of new visits as opposed to return visitors, that, that has decreased. So we can show this to our funder and, um, and he's happy. Uh, okay, this last part, um, we, uh, this is, um, my, our, our funder, the Office of Knowledge Exchange, he agrees that we should give this back to the community, all of this work that we have worked on uh, uh, with, with Chilea, that we should give it to the DSpace community and find other people to, to use this. And what it is, okay, so we're saying that we will give all of this development, uh, researcher pages, author profiles, new objects, the, the statistics, um, the, the solar faceted displays, everything, to the DSpace community. Uh, and we're doing this because of knowledge exchange. Knowledge exchange believes that if the university institution gives it to the community, then we can realize mutual benefits. Well, in this case, we, uh, we would find uh, people to co-develop, and we could take advantage of that co-development. So, um, to, to tell you, it, it uh, will be, be packaged in DSpace. It will be contributed to DSpace in several, uh, in, in separate modules and patches. It's, and it's not take everything or leave everything. It, it's in, in different pieces that you can choose to add this or you can not add it. So if you think that's a good idea, there are certain things you can do. You could give feedback to the, the mailing lists up here, uh, the DSpace mailing lists. Um, developers, technicians could go to GitHub and download the co code, try it out, um, and uh, send enhancement requests. Um, the, uh, let's see. Um, we, we planned that this would become part of uh, the DSpace release 3.0 if, if everything goes well. So, and that would be pretty, pretty soon. So 
So other things, uh, we, we have a poster that, uh, that's out there. Uh, people from uh, Chile are here, the, um, Andrea Bonini. Uh, you can find him to talk to about technical details or me. Um, I forgot to put my contact there. You can, you can Google me, uh, David Palmer, researcher page, and you can come to my author profile. So, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is a, a mashup. It wouldn't have worked with, uh, without all of these different sources and people playing nicely with each other. So, thank you. sentiment to what a great sentiment to, to finish on thank you so much David and thank you to all three of my speakers this morning um, just see they've got a couple of minutes for questions if anyone wants to oh okay here we go so I just wanted to congratulate David on his uh, HKU knowledge exchange non-academic prize which is uh, on the front page of the scholars hub Thank you. Um, so I have another difficult question, sorry. Um, <laughs> which is, obviously you've done loads of work here and it looks excellent, I'm really impressed. Um, and you've brought all of these data sources together into your repository. Uh, and you've talked about using APIs and you've talked about doing scraping and that kind of thing. And I know from experience that these are non-trivial tasks and they're, you know, not to be undertaken lightly. Is there now an API on your system so that people can come and get the data that you've sweat and tears to, to grind out of all these other sources? <laughs> yes, so that, that's another thing that, that's in the works. Uh, we're, we're making a, a web service. Um, we have found that, well, the, the faculty of dentistry now scrapes our pages to, so that they can build their own pages for the department. And also, um, there was one more. An anyway, there are, there are those people that do want to reuse our data. So we are making a web service that this could be easier. Well, I have to say, it's fantastic. I'm deeply envious, uh, I have to say. Um, any other last questions? Um, if there's not, I'd like to ask you all to thank our speakers again in the traditional manner. And uh, we'll break for coffee. <laughs>